Listen, I'm not through yet. You know what's going to happen to me? Suppose I tell you exactly what's going to happen to you. You're going to be back in television. Only it won't be quite the same as it was before. There'll be a reasonable cooling off period, and then somebody will say, why don't we try them again in an inexpensive format? People's memories aren't too long. And you know, in a way, he'll be right. Some of the people forget, and some of them won't. Oh, you'll have a show. Maybe not the best hour, or in the top 10, maybe not even in the top 35. But you'll have a show. It just won't be quite the same as it was before. Then a couple of new fellas will come along, and pretty soon a lot of your fans will be flocking around them. And then one day somebody will ask, whatever happened to, uh, uh, what's his name? You know, the one who was so big. The number one fella a couple of years ago. He was famous. How can we forget a name like that? Oh, by the way, have you seen uh, Barry Mills? I think he's the greatest thing since Will Rogers. Uh, hello, and Happy New Year from the Sunbeef Podcast. Um, this is your holiday hangover episode. I am one of your hosts, Gary Hill. I, I sound kind of hungover myself because I, I had about, I don't know, a couple hours of sleep in the past 16 hours, but it, it is what it is. But um, <laughs> I'm gracious and uh, overjoyed did you have at least one of my my beef hosts with, with, with you tonight and that's lovely iris how you doing iris hello hello how you doing and uh happy hangover to everyone yeah drink up if you're you know merry or depressed or what, whatever you have going on with your holiday life you know <laughs> <laughs> um yeah we'll start the show the same way we always started and i'll uh i'll ask iris what you've been watching lately okay so uh, last night, oh no, Saturday, we watched uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife. And let me tell you, I fucking loved the movie. It, I was cracking up. I was like, oh, that is so cool. La, 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 la. You know, there's so much of the, the, the canon movies, so many Easter eggs in there. It, it was just amazing. Um, I mean, you know, you've got characters that come back. And at the end, I was fucking crying like a baby. So it was just this beautiful little run through the nostalgia of, you know, my high school days when the first movie came out. And um, and then just this really interesting new story that added to the canon of the original. So it, it was great. I really, really loved it. And then anything else that I've been watching, it's just been um, TV stuff. For some reason, I have uh, I've gotten on to a... Uh, the alien invasion stuff and UFOs for some. So, yeah, that's what I've been watching. I've been watching Roswell and things like that. So, but besides that, that's pretty much it for me. I've been having a pretty boring life. Uh, it's, that's not so boring, you know, it's working, you know, some, some play. It's okay. You know, um, yeah. I watched Ghostbusters Act Life as well. I watched it. I watched it like five times. I, I loved it that much. And yeah, see, it's awesome. That 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 that, that, that like, like I tell folks, you know, have you seen it yet? You know, because if that any doesn't grab you, you know, what, what happens mm -hmm. when, you know, you say, ah, oh, there's Grandpa. You know, I'll, that's all I'll say. And then you know, it hits you in all the feels all at once because it's so tastefully done. And it was. Man. It really was. And boy, did it hit me in the feels. And um, yeah, all the kickbacks, like like, like Iris said, my my buddy, my buddy caught a lot of it in the trailer, the first trailer, the the whole Sh 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 Shandar's mine, you know, stuff like that. He caught all the little all the little quips there, like, oh yeah, that, that that's a thing, you know, and it's, it's um book stacking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, really, really great though. And I I people complain about they don't like the kid characters and. I, I'm not. I'm not. I don't love the little, little podcast. Little podcast boy. They they call podcast, but you know, did, did, he's there. He's there for comic relief, and you know, and um, Paul Rudd's fun. Yeah. Mo Mom's fun. Uh, that 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 Stranger Things kid grew up way too fast. He's got a Adam's apple the size of a baseball now, just sticking out his right? chin. <laughs> <laughs> it's huge, huge now. But um. Good stuff there. I, I watched some other stuff too. I just can't uh, recall all the way what that is because you know it, 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 um, I, I saw Spider Man, um, the new Spider Man, and uh, I didn't mention it last time, but that's that's pretty terrific. And I, I, I'm sure you guys have seen the spoilers by now. And uh, 
all, all three Spider Men show up in this in the movie, with the exception of um, the Into the Spider Verse uh, kid, who I whose name I forget, and I should not do that because he's the African American Spider Man, and damn, I forget his name now. But he shows up, but he doesn't show up in it. But um, Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, and Tom Holland together, along with all those villains from those original Spider Man films, are together. Willem Dafoe's in it. Uh, wish wish he had more of him in that movie, but he was pretty good as like that the split again, the split personality action is like a natural fit for Willem Dafoe, but he he, so he, he plays real good in this movie and I'd say even better in the um than in the original Spider Man film, the Sam Raimi one, because he's a little more tortured in this one. Like he wants to be good and then you know he has he has that switch and you know that you know that switch is coming and it, it comes and mm -hmm. Final battle and yeah, Doctor Strange. It it, it sets up Doctor Strange too. So if you watch to the end of the the end credits, they show um Doctor Strange uh too like a preview of what's gonna happen next. And oh, other Marvel related stuff. How about your holiday hangover? If you wanna watch something good, um, Disney Plus has that six episode Hawkeye series, which is fucking delightful and. I know what you're thinking. You see the preview, like, oh, that's that's Hawkeye's kid. It's not Hawkeye's kid. Uh, Haley Steinfeld, who's a actress I've enjoyed since she played the, the young girl in, in the True Grit remake. Um, she plays Hawkeye's like protege. She idolizes him from the the battle from New York. She she saw it outside of her window as her as her father died from the alien invasion, and she she wanted to be an archer, you know, since then and. She got to meet him and she, she meet up with him and they go on adventures together and it's all set around Christmas because Hawkeye's got to be home for Christmas. And uh, again, spoilers of it have happened. I'm going to have to check those out. Yeah. Spoilers have happened. Vincent D'Onofrio confirmed as the Kingpin. He's back. Um, because why wouldn't you? Because you watch the Daredevil series, you know, he's vicious. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's good stuff. Um, and Charlie Cox shows up and... and uh, Spider Spider Man No Way Home because he's he's Peter's lawyer, so he's confirmed as Daredevil. So it's it's really exciting time for, for Marvel fans to say, you know what, they took these cancelled Netflix shows and they're filtering these characters back in right rightfully so. Cause that was um that was a big blow for them. I think they could have went so much further. I, I blame Iron Fist because Iron Fist is kinda lame, but it, it, it is what it is. Um yeah, besides that a lot of T V I watched um, season finale of Curb Your Enthusiasm, where we're the whole ploy. It's, it's always something at the beginning of the season that Larry's trying to prevent, and this time somebody actually accidentally dies in Larry's pool, so he's fighting a, a fence law. Oh dear! So <laughs> <laughs> to fight the fence law, he he he, he discovers that Tra Tracy Ullman's character is like a like on the board for for Santa Monica for like zoning. So he's plowing her to get his way. You know, that this is classic Larry David on Kirby Enthusiasm and it's um one of my favorite things in the world is his uh La Larry's small victories and one of the prime episodes of that if you haven't seen it before is the one where a Palestinian chicken restaurant opens up in the town and she's really beautiful, the owner, and Larry thinks that plowing her is a victory for the Jews and uh it's it's like a filthy Seinfeld, and you know it's it's better than Seinfeld in a lot of ways. But um, I I, I love Curb Your Enthusiasm. If you haven't given it a chance, you just just give it a watch. And you'll become addicted really fast, and it's uh it's good times. You know, although I hear Jeff Garland's been a bad boy on the Goldberg, so they 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 he resigned. So I'd imagine I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. It is what it is. Um. Nothing really eating at me right now, cause uh, it, it's over with, except for like tiredness. But um, t today, tonight, we're gonna discuss two films in which, you know, derelicts or criminals, whatever you want to call them, you know, that they, they're they're outside the law and they they really don't care, uh, become unlikely icons, uh, in a show we call certifiable icons, and. With that, we're going to do a face in the crowd from 1957, and John Waters' um, perennial classic, <sighs> one I like to drop my folks on Christmas Day because, you know, 
if they haven't seen it, they should see it and just give me give me their reactions. <laughs> uh, female trouble. We're gonna do that and excited about both with Iris and wish wish Suzanne was here, especially for this first film because it's it's really great. It's for, in in every sense. Um, we'll start with that one first. The face in the crowd, right after the trailer. <laughs> Oh, Lonesome Rhodes. Look out for him. He's mean. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Andy Griffith, another sensational newcomer from Ilya Kazan, who brought you Marlon Brando and James Dean and Carol Baker. by millions, an idol of the people. Bye! Bye, Lucy! So long, Luther, you're right to me now. I'll be thinking of you, good people. Boy, am I glad to shake that dump. Look, and don't, don't try to play the noble defender of the sanctity of marriage with me, Papa Man. I know where you've been some of those nights when Betty was waiting up for you. You know, you hit me and it'll be all over the papers as much as the people love you tonight. You're fired. You. I'm not just an entertainer. I'm an influence, a wielder of opinion, a force, a force. Oh, if they ever heard the way that psycho really talks. They're mine. I own them. They think like I do. But they're even more stupid than I am. <laughs> so I gotta think for them. One of the greatest characterizations ever put on the screen in the whole history of motion pictures. Man, I'm just a country boy. <laughs> But if the president tries to stop me, I'll flood the White House with millions of telegrams. A Face in the Crowd from 1957. Uh, your cheapo IMDb plot synopsis is... A female radio reporter turns a folk singing drifter into a powerful media star. Uh, this stars um, Andy Griffith as, as Larry. Uh, uh, well, his name is Larry. They call him Lonesome Rhodes is the name that the Patricia Neal character gives him. And uh, as you might not have seen him before, you know, this is... I'm not sure. I'll have to look this up. I will when Ira starts talking. If this is pre-Andy Griffith or not, I couldn't tell you for sure. Uh... Patricia Neal uh, plays Marcia Jeffries, who's the, the radio person. Anthony Franciosa uh, plays Joey De Palma. Uh, almost an unrecognizable Walter Matthau, because he's so young in this movie, uh, as Mel Miller, who's like a uh, liaison to, to Marcia. Uh, Lee Remick as Betty, Betty Lou Fleckham, who uh, becomes Lonesome Road's uh, thing. He's, he's his <laughs> wife. <laughs> you know, I don't like explain her, you know. He, he becomes her sugar daddy, let's put it that way. Pretty much. Um, this is directed by Ilya Kazan. If you don't know who that is, you know, look it up. This is a person that's made many people stars. This is like the Harvey Weinstein of the 50s, but not se not, not sexually, you know, frustrating, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he made a lot of people stars, and, you know, it's... It, uh, Directed such such films as are you ready for this on the waterfront east of Eden a streetcar named desire just just to name a few you know and uh I'm, I'm gonna kick it to Iris first and and say uh <laughs> what about this film girl uh, hit, hit me girl well this movie I mean it is a beautiful commentary of society period doesn't matter what era you're in it's uh, significant and uh it's very very uh, impactful for whatever time you're sitting in of course in 1957 at this time we have you know the the big red scare where there was a commie behind you know every corner and you just didn't know who that commie was it could be your neighbor it could be this you know it could be that person it could be a face in the crowd right it could just be anyone. So what's interesting about this movie is it's just like I was saying that that social commentary of how this 
down and out dude who at first was exploited by a little bit more educated people. And then he became basically an icon and a demagogue and turned around and exploited the people that exploited him. That's basically what this movie is about. And if you think about it, um, right now we are going through something very similar. So uh, the Andy Griffith is, is just unfucking believable. This guy is seriously showing his acting chops with this. He uh, has a character who is very in your face, brash. Um, what back in the 1957 was considered an uneducated, everyday kind of guy. That's basically what he was. He was a hobo. And Patricia Niels finds him in the jail and just starts talking to him. And they end up exploiting this guy for their radio. He becomes kind of like a celebrity. And uh, he has the common man's ear. Basically what it is. He has a common man's ear. And um, he pretty much can manipulate that middle class, lower class America of the time. And he pretty much had them eating out of his hand. You know, if uh, if he wanted to sell a particular, like, let's say, a mattress, then he would tell them, hey, you know, in a kidding, joking kind of way, people would go out and buy these mattresses because he thought this mattress was cool or they would buy this food because it was cool or this or that uh, to the point where he got to um, – be an influencer to a point where he was actually saying hey you know what if you want to be president you let me take care of you and we'll get you there and that's what he was doing but in the end and it, i think it's kind of funny because i mean this has happened a few years ago he left his mic open and basically said that i can manipulate these people any way they want i can do this and i can do that and i can do no wrong well <laughs> the people heard this and he started falling out of favor from everybody until he was completely and totally alone. And um, I find it interesting how we just don't learn from history, do we? <laughs> because we see this happen over and over and over again. And, and currently we see it happening now. So, uh, I mean, this movie is just this beautiful mm -hmm. version of how society works and how easily we as a society, when we are told, oh, you are so awesome, you're so great, let's do things this way because, you know, you're the smart one. You're the one that wants to do it this way. How easily manipulated we are. And this movie just shows it very, very well. That's pretty much it. Well, this this is his debut, by the way. This is 1957. This is well, his debut well, in anything, you know. Well, for a debut, this kid... Because that's what he was. He was a kid. He is so young in this. Um, damn. Uh, yeah, Gr no Andy, Griffith, Andy Griffith show came three years later. Damn, th th this guy was really, he, he just, he blew his wad good on this one. <laughs> I mean, if you excuse the... Well, if you, there, but yeah. if you watch the film, you know, and, and you should, you should absolutely see this movie. You know, no matter what we say, you know, to spoil it, you should absolutely watch this movie. Yes. And, um... For for him to be so charismatic in his debut, and three years later you get reserved a, a Sheriff Andy Taylor, um, what you, you, me? you you wouldn't know the difference. But if you watch this, mm. you know, because the film basically the, the the woman's looking for like new new singing voices and new interesting people for her radio show because. You know, television wasn't all the, you know, terrible rage been in 57. You know, they had they had Western shows and stuff, but there wasn't a ton of stuff on there. But, yeah, you know, radio was still very prevalent. And she finds this guy in a jailhouse that can, that can carry a tune. And he's, he's more than that, obviously, because eventually they use him to sell advertising for, like, like 1957 the speed that you can buy over the counter. It's basically what it is. It's like sugar pills. And... And he, he, they use them. They, they figure they got. And again, this, if 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 Lonesome Roads was on social media, y'all, he'd be killing it, man. You know, nowadays he'd be even bigger than he was. And but they use this this face, this face that's you know a good old boy, you know, for, from you know small town USA to, to sell this product and to sell anything they want to. And he gets bigger and bigger, and his head gets bigger and bigger because he's really. But by, by, at the start of the film, he's just like a, like a drunk or like a regular guy, you know, who's in the drunk tank probably 
three, four times a week. They they're used to having there, and then they, 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 they he gets discovered, and he's just like any other. You know, if you ever talk to country folk and lo- long-winded, you know, charismatic people, and they never experienced that before, apparently, in a public setting, and they say, you know what, we're, we're going to use this guy to sell a lot of things, including you, because it, it's eventually, it, like 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 uh, Iris said, Mc- 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 McCarthyism plays a big role in this movie. They they. He, they, they think that this guy is, knows everything. He, he really doesn't know everything, though. He just, he just knows what he likes. He knows what he knows. He knows his own personal passions. And they all come out in these, you know, variety hours they set him up for. And these commercials they set him up for. And like Iris says, uh, political aspirations for this candidate who's not doing so hot. So they, they figure they're going to get Lonesome Roads here to, to, to bring him up, bring him up, bring him up. And... Poor Patricia Neal, you know, she, she's realizing the monster that she created. And there's even a point where she, she, he comes to her apartment, I think it is, and he's drunk and he, he's crying and he tells her flat out, you know, like, uh, you know, you know I, I wouldn't be here. For, I forget the, the dialogue, but it's something about, you know, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you or, you know, you, you made me or you, you created me, something like that. And she's... She has to look at her face like, yeah, I did that, and it's a terrible fucking thing. She kind of, like, realizes that she did kind of exploit this guy, but now it's come to bite her in the ass. And um, it, what you were saying about how this guy was just so charismatic and everything, um, Mel Miller, uh, which I believe uh, is the one that Walter Matthau plays. Correct. Says, I'll, I'll say one thing for him. He's got the courage of his ignorance, and that's exactly what this is about. Just being so confident of your ignorance that nobody realizes that you're being ignorant. I mean, he, he this guy had the confidence, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He, and he does, and he, he had it all the way till the end there. And you know, when he wasn't, you know, intoxicated and you know, looking for his uh, his young his young coed that he. <laughs> <laughs> he said to go judge the baton twirling contest, and he he picks a wife out of that bunch. And um, a very young and very cute Lee Rem- Lee Remick in this movie, he becomes basically her sugar daddy and chooses her over over Marsha because he promised Marsha that they would be a thing, and that didn't happen. And went went to Juarez, Mexico, to get married to Betty Lou Fleckham, you know. Yeah. <laughs> then brought back Tico and Pico. Tico and Pico, the, the yeah, the Chihuahuas. Oh uh... my God, that's another part. When the crowd surges to go see Betty Lou Fleckham slash Rhodes, one of the puppies cries out so awful. I mean, it got to me. I was like, oh my God, I had to rewind it to see if they had drop, dropped the puppy or something. But I think maybe she just squeezed it a little too hard. I don't know. But to me, that was awful. They're very small yeah. dogs. It's easy to it's easy to hurt them a little bit, you know, especially yeah, know. when they're puppies like that, you know. Oh, it just hurt me. <laughs> but yeah, she, she gets, he's, he's going to have his big, um, I, I'm guessing this is live, his his variety show here to do. Mm-hmm. Put to push the candidate, you know, Senator Senator Worthington Fuller, and um, yeah, Worthington Fuller, I was like, oh, Worthington Ford, yeah, and um, she 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 breaks in because she can't take any more because he basically is driven her mad at this point, you know, because mm-hmm. she, she with guilt and and you know just remorse and everything, all the all those feelings going on, and she turns back on his mic after it's been turned off, and he just starts going off about. How these yokels will listen to anything he says, and blah blah blah, blah. and it's it, it's it's happened in other things before, but I don't think it's happened like before this. This is like a first time thing, or close to being the first time thing. This has happened. This has happened hundreds of times since. But the the idea of the hot mic is uh is, plays a big role in this movie because the people that that are following him and love him, and you know they, they um they they don't anymore. And yeah, they abandoned him. They abandoned him, and he, he he realizes that when he goes back to his fancy apartment, he's supposed to have this big this big dinner with everybody, and nobody shows because he's done. And Walter Matthau's character, Mel Miller, he he he, he comes in with with Marcia, and it, it, he lays it on thick. I I'm I'm gonna drop the clip at the beginning of this episode because it's so it's so important to realize how disposable people are in in this sense. 
because he basically says that he can, that, you know, when you're done, they'll just get another dummy to go out there and to, to sell their products or sell their candidate. And it's it's so relevant today, especially with with social media being a thing and r rampant, and you know, people people you you don't live without it. You know, these people and uh. Him just laying it out there is it's, 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 it's a special piece of dialogue, and he he's one of those characters. I think he's the the MVP of this movie. Besides, of course, Lonesome Rose just just acting the acting the fool, but he's he's the realist of this movie. He's the one that sees past Lonesome Rose's bullshit and says, "You know what? And this is and he keeps warning Marsha. You know, he, he, he's he's not gonna do anything for you. You know, just stop now while you're ahead. You know, just." could cut ties here and he she doesn't do that and she goes mad because of it and the rest is possible suicide at the end of this movie you don't know it has one of those those cutaway endings is is lonesome rose gonna jump because he can't, he can't take a life anymore without his his followers and uh it has one of those open endings like that and i i loved every fucking bit of this movie and i i'll it, it, it'll come out my rating it's all i'll say about that you know Oh, um, anything else you'd like to say about the film, Iris? And uh, what would you give it, one to ten? Well, uh, just one more thing is basically when um, Lonesome is basically talking to Marsha, and he says this whole country is just like my flock of sheep, and he starts going to like Regna, crackers, hillbillies, shut-ins. He goes, they're all going to be fighters for Fuller, which is the guy that he was trying to, you know, play up. He goes, they're mine, and I own them, and. You know, it's it's sad to think, but yes, because in, a, in another part, he says, you know, I could take uh, chicken fertilizer and convince them it's caviar. And that's exactly what he was doing. And that's I think that's when the mic was open. And that's when people were like, well, well fuck this guy, because he thinks I'm an idiot. But anyway, uh, this movie, I'm going to give it a 10 because it was just so engrossing. And it's a two hour movie, but you don't feel like you're watching a two-hour movie because you're just so engrossed and invested in the characters that you are watching on the screen and that it doesn't feel like a long movie at all. So I'm giving it a 10. Great. Uh, quick note here, I forgot to mention, I love the part where um, the supposed first Mrs. Rhodes shows up. It's it's so oh, yeah. it's so tabloid at this point and it's it's so in place and, and more and more in place nowadays that you know this 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 wife, this ex wife that shows up that he married in in, in Mexico long ago and, uh, to to collect her monies I guess to collect her collect her tribute. <laughs> yeah. um, that that that's awesome. Um, another quick note. Um, and I have to look for him now because I love this actor. Uh, R. G. Armstrong shows up as the teleprompter operator, and I, I have to. I have to check it out now to, to see where he is because uh, I never see the young R.G. Armstrong. It's it's a uh, it's much like Andy Griffith and um yeah great performances by by your leads and um it, it's just it's just a story you could follow that's that's relevant as much as it was in '57 as it is now in 2022. Yeah, yep. people w w will follow anything and they will follow anyone, i.e. the Kardashians. You know, I'm not saying everybody's like that, but you know, they, 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 their mother made a business of her children and, and that's fine. You don't want to be successful, but at what cost, you know, it, it, they seem like decent people, but you know, behind closed doors, you know, they could be real shitheads. You, you don't know. Um, it's like when the, the whole world was convinced that Paris Hilton was stupid and you find out, wow, she's highly intelligent. Well, you, you should have, you know, whatever, you know. Look, look past the, the surface there. And, uh, um, Sh Sheriff Andy, god damn, what, what, what a debut. And, and, and if you guys want to watch uh, something good, I mean, I love the stuff from, like, the 70s, like, TV movie stuff where he plays, like, the villain and stuff. But this is, this is, um, you know, for a debut, I, 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 we always talk about this, uh, how important this is. But usually, like, a debut is, like, a, like a bit part or something or, like, they show up for a couple of minutes, but they made this, they must have had much faith in this man to make him the, the star of this film. And God damn it, Ilya Kazan, you, 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 you did it because you made him a star. And this, this, this set him on his course. It sure did. I mean, it was this, uh, 
No Time for Sergeants, and then the Andy Griffith Show, which is iconic today, as it was back in those days. Because everybody's watching it then, and you know what? Everybody's watching it now, too, because everywhere. Hell yeah, you know, you do that whistle, and everybody knows exactly what that goes to. But, um, yeah, Walter Matthau, you know, I love, I love him and everything, but I've never seen him, you know, as, as serious as he is in this movie. And, you know... Not, I wouldn't even say cold, but he's, he's, he's kind of cold with, with Lonesome Roads, but he's telling them like it is. And the, the, that, especially that monologue at the end is, is really something special. And it's, I, I, it's, it's a 10. It's, it's a fucking 10. Um, I want to say it might be on the Criterion channel if you want to go check it out. Um, it's available on most digital, pla- digital, um, things you could buy it on criterion blu-ray which i i tend to do because there's probably some neat commentaries on there and stuff um i'm i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna invest in that blu-ray I'm, I'm 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 gonna look forward to it so 10 out of 10 from both of us i recommend go check out a face in the crowd if you haven't yet i'm sure you've heard of it and you have been waiting to pull that trigger but if our conversation hasn't done it for you you know just uh go go do it you know just go for it yeah, and it's available. If you have Prime, Amazon Prime, it's available there for free. Oh, there you yeah. go. Cool. But next up, we're gonna we're gonna talk about something uh, a little a little less serious, but you know, it's very fun. Uh, <laughs> female <laughs> trouble from I'm sorry, female trouble from 1974. Right after this trailer. Look, the, the star of Pink Flamingos is here again. It's divine. She's got balls, and she's got female trouble. I'm a thief and a shit kicker, and uh, I'd like to be famous. Dawn Davenport is eating a meatball sandwich right out in class. Here she is, divine as Dawn Davenport, a feisty young high school girl. My parents are going to be real sorry if I don't get them cha-cha heels. Nice girls don't wear cha-cha heels. Give me those trips. Now I'll never wear those ugly shoes. I told you to come Yes, she had a lot of problems, and she found herself in big female, female trouble. Well, I just wanted to tell you that I'm pregnant and I want money. Baby, just because you got them big udders don't mean you're something special. It's hard being a loving mother. I give her free food, a bed, clean underpants. What does she expect? Look in the mirror, Tabby. For 14, you don't look so good. Never have I encountered such a morally bankrupt group of people. Eat hide them, eat hide them. If they're smart, they're queer. And if they're stupid, they're straight. Crime enhances one's beauty. The worse the crime gets, the more ravishing one becomes. I'm going to chop off your scrawny little paw. Watch as Divine performs the most perverse acts ever brought to the screen. I blew Richard Speck! And I'm so fucking beautiful, I can't stand it myself! You'll follow Divine's life of sex and crime from its tawdry beginning to its very end. Share the tears and laughter with Divine, Edith Massey as Aunt Ida, and the Pink Flamingos Gang. A new high in low taste. John Waters' Female Trouble. She had a lot of problems. Coming soon from Saliva Films. Ah, Female Trouble. (laughs) 1974. Your chief plot synopsis is this. A spoiled schoolgirl runs away from home, gets pregnant while hitchhiking, and ends up as a fashion model for a pair of beauticians who like to photograph women committing crimes. Uh, yeah, that's, that's part of it. Uh, <laughs> this is written and directed by John Waters. It has a lot of his regular Dreamland uh, Studios favorites in here. Uh, of course, Divine as Dawn Davenport. And... <laughs> I forget the guy's name, but, um... The, the guy that's 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 Don's uh you know raper in this movie. So if you're always you can do Divine Fuck by Divine, this is the film for you. You can check it out. Yeah. Uh, David Lockery, who's no longer with us as, as Donald Dasher. Um, Mary v- Mary Vivian Pierce is Donna Dasher. Uh, Mink Stoll, of course, is Taffy Davenport. Uh, the great Edith Massey uh, he <laughs> is Aunt Ida. Uh, Eggless in this movie. She hates eggs in this movie. People. Uh, Cookie Mueller as Conchetta, 
Susan Walsh as Chicklet as her two uh, her two um, crazy counterparts. My, Michael Potter as the possibly gay gator, but not really. Um, there's a, there's some other folks this movie. Yeah, though, that, that's your basic core people. And um, uh, Iris, I, I'm gonna kick it to you first because I, I I I I think I know your opinion on this film, but tell the folks what you think of Female Trouble. <laughs> All right, this movie. <laughs> Okay, first of all, this movie is completely in my wheelhouse, right? Complete exploitation. John Waters, boom, there it is. Um, I mean, you've got all kinds of things in here. You've got boobs flashing. You've got dicks flashing. I mean, wow. But when you take this movie as a whole, it is a very interesting and intrusive way of explaining the breakdown of the family unit, right? At least that's how I see it. It's just a mom. It's, it's a young girl who ended up getting pregnant because she was hitchhiking. Everything that mom and dad told you not to do back then and still do. Uh, then, of course, she got in trouble. She has a kid. Now she even take care of the child and doesn't even want it. Blah. Uh, but I find it uh, kind of interesting because it, the story just goes along, right? And it, it's like this mad dash hashery of all kinds of stuff going on. But you kind of pay attention to it anyway. And it all comes together in the end. And the one person that you thought you know, the ending is, is, is just not what you think it's going to be. Because most of the time in these movies of, you know, good, well, she really wasn't a good girl, but, you know, good girl gone bad. It, it ends up with either a death or turns a new leaf. Uh, in this one, it was kind of interesting the way it ended. And I guess we can spoil it, can't we? I mean, it's, it's 1974. Oh, sure. Go for it. Okay. So, um, you know, in the end, she wants to die because it's kind of like she feels like that is going to make her just even more famous than what she is already. Because basically that's what it, this movie is about. It's like fame and how do you get there? And the things that people will do to be famous, a.k.a. reality stars. <laughs> uh, and that's basically what it is. I think if Divine uh, was alive now or they did something like Female Trouble Now, it would have to be like from a sense of a reality star because I mean, you've got people like let's say big brother or any of these other reality shows that will literally put themselves on an Island and starve to death almost because they're going to be one famous and they're going to have money. And that's basically what uh, Davenport, uh, you know, what she wanted. Don Davenport wanted money and she wanted to be famous and she got there at what cost, but she did have it. So, you know, I think it's just John Waters trying to basically show you, like, how what a bunch of pitiful people we are when it comes to money and fame, because we'll do anything for it. What about you? Oh, like I said, this is a film that I did at Suzanne's house once. She has some friends that are not really, really around anymore. I was like, you know, have you seen Female Trouble? This is like Christmas Eve. And I said, like, turn it on and the part, it is a party movie, and it, the most fun about this film is to see people's reactions who are kind of normies, you know, to, to watch what happened next. And, you know, this film has a lot of that, and I got to see it in, on the big screen at a 24-hour at a, a thing at, at, the music oh, box, wow. at the Music Box Theater, I think it was in Chicago. But the, 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 the genuine crowd reactions are the ones that you know have never seen it before. Uh, <laughs> it is something magical, let me tell you. But Female Trouble, much like a face of the crowd, you know, if, if Don Davenport was, she would have her own reality show. It, it'd yeah, be a thing. Right. It would be a mega hit. And I've always said that the, the next, the only, the only step they can go further is public executions. And people would tune in at 8 p.m. every night to watch it. I tell you, right, goddamn now. And then oh, yeah. people, Don Davenport was, was ahead of the curve on that. And I, I always, I give credit to this film and like shock treatment as like, this is reality TV before reality TV was a thing. And this one is no exception. This is how you create, create an icon. She's basically this girl who runs away and probably the most famous scene of this film was Christmas Christmas morning and Dawn doesn't get her cha-cha heels from her, her milk toast parents. And she destroys the presents and she dumps the Christmas tree on top of her mother who's probably presumed dead or just fainted from shock. And 
she runs away. And like Iris said, this is what everything your mother told you not to do. She she goes hitchhiking, looking for hitchhiking, and she finds she finds this man, you know, which who rapes her, kind of. I'm gonna say kind of because there's a, there's a point in the, in the thing where she's like, oh no no no, then she's then she's totally into it by halfway through. <laughs> so yeah, she's getting plowed by 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 divine divine fucks divine in this movie and makes taffy. And, um, with Taffy's birth scene, I, I said in, on a Facebook <laughs> post when I was watching this, it was like a film that'll make you say, that's one way to cut the milk a cord. I don't want to give it away, but it's, it's something nasty. And, you know, this is, um, this is what the, 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 the mountain of John Waters was built on was, was filth and it's, it's filthy. So if you haven't seen it, uh, it gets cut in a very unusual way and Taffy is bored and. Taffy is, I, I'd imagine, 10 years old is, is being stolen first, I'd, I'd imagine. And playing a child's character who just wants attention from her mother and do, doesn't get it because Divine's into her own shit with her own friends and robbing people and it's, it's... But she she sees this real opportunity because her girlfriend tells her about this salon that looks for people who are unusual. And that's that's what the Dashers are. The Dashers own the salon. And they 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 <laughs> they see divine amongst this group of, of women who, yeah, they they they, they use her and, and they they exploit her, and they make her a star, you know, in in a gross grossest way possible to the point of um you know giving her whatever she wants. There's a point in the film where Edith Massey plays Aunt Ida, who's aunt to 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 Gator, who she she, she wishes that Gator was a homosexual throughout this whole film. But Gator, you know, falls falls in love with Divine, k k kind of. It's, it, kind of the Don Davenport. I'm sorry. And, <laughs> I gotta say, you know, I'm I'm not a hunter of the human penis, but the the the, the human penises they show in this film are some of the grossest I have ever seen. You know, I mean, it's <laughs> there's a scene where 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 Gator is is it actually plows Divine and Taffy runs in and like I'll never um. Oh, what, what did she say? Uh, I wouldn't suck your dick if if your balls had oxygen in them, you know, or something like that. I forget what she says, but um, I wouldn't suck your balls had ox, uh, you know, um, oxygen, and I, you know, and I needed my next breath or something. Something like that. But Gator's dick in this movie looks like it had you know, what they call brown sugar all over. Like it's dirty as shit. He just like. Sticking his filthy little schmeckle inside of, uh, inside Don Davenport, and she's not not really enjoying it. But he's he's looking at pornography as he does this. Like he can't stand to look at her, so he, he's looking at pornography. <laughs> um, real small part of the movie, but they go to a point to where because because Aunt Ida hates hates Don Davenport. She's to the point of throwing garbage on her her property, and Don throws a hilariously throws a fish on Aunt Ida at some point in this movie, and. That's that's fucking hilarious, um, but they they kidnap her and put her in a cage and cut off one of her hands. Gives her a hook hand, and this is like Divine's prize for being like their star. But it goes it goes crazy far because Aunt Ida escapes with the help of Taffy, who's gonna become a Hari Krishna because she she hates she hates life so much and it she's going to devious religious lifestyles. She lets her out and throws acid on Dawn's face and. Dawn becomes a bigger star because she's disfigured and more beautiful to the Dashers in, in that sense. And uh, this this is a weird fucking movie, but the, it's a weird. It's, it's the kind of weird that I love. And there's a point in the film where and this this was um supervised by a nurse because they were using actual needles. Where they liquid eyeliner is a thing that they use as a drug because Divine gets really excited when they inject eyeliner into her. And oh my God, yeah. I don't know what that's about. Um, but I'll use this rally at the end, I mean, much like, you know, our, our friend Lonesome Roads, and, and I, I don't know, it's, it's, it's divine, just, just, you know, being divine and, you know, speaking about how, how, you know, she provided the guns for this and she blew Richard Speck and she's screaming at these people to, to make them cheer. They do cheer. And the finale is, you know. And this is, this is really, it goes back to, you know, what would you do to be famous? 
where, where Don has a handgun and says, who, who wants to fucking die to be famous? And people are raising their hand to be shot by Don Davenport. And they do. And she, she starts blowing shots into the crowd and people run for the hills because they realize, they out like, oh shit, man, <laughs> exactly. Like, you know what? This is all it's correct not to be. Uh, next show at 11. You know, it's, it's uh, but of course, the the, the the Dashers, you know, shun her. There's a whole audio section in there where, yeah, she she did this. And she, she, she is a point. <laughs> before, before Divine's big show, Taffy shows up as the, as the Hare Krishna. And she hates it so much that she kills Taffy. And it, there's a whole audio piece where they, they tell on her about that. And it's, 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 uh, I did nothing wrong. Um, favorite scene in the movie, though. I'll tell you right now. It's not nothing to do with Divine. The part, because they, they they own a hair salon, the Dashers, and the, the girl is upset because it's $105 for a wash and set. So all these gay hairdressers, gay hairdressers uh, bombard her and destroy her due because she she won't pay. I, I think that's... Uh, yeah, that was... I think it's great. <laughs> but yeah, it ends, it ends with Divine, you know, going to the electric chair and... Becoming, you know, which what, what she thinks, you know, her death was is gonna start a movement and you know, it, it very well might. <laughs> so this is again all about, you know, the, the following of, of people. I mean, it, it's it's people would follow Don Davenport uh, off a cliff. It, not, not just in this movie, but even more today. People are, are susceptible to anything and they would believe the gospel of Don Davenport and even even the Dashers who are just weird eccentric people and but they would believe them too. They would they would be stars. They'd be stars everywhere. And because there's always that niche audience that, that, you know, will watch it and then that niche audience grows into to the normies. And I, I mean, a lot of folks who have not seen this have, have probably seen Hairspray and Cry Baby, you know, but they haven't seen stuff like this. So when they watch this, you know, it's, it's like the Peter Jackson effect, you know, people that have seen Lord of the Rings and they only know him for that have never seen Meet the Feebles yeah. or Bad Taste, you know, or Brain Dead, or Brain Dead, and yeah, it's, it's, it's they should, and and it, 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 but this is um, this is just what the show is. They're, they're certifiable, certifiable, certifiable idols, and. They're, they're 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 crazy, you know. But they 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 have followers, and these followers, much like today, people will uh, follow them to great lengths to to you know be with that person and agree with that person. And uh, again, re relevant today uh, as as the I don't know if as the first movie because there's some real gross out stuff in here, but um and some real funny stuff, yeah, you know? like Don. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Dawn dancing in the street in her dress with the the scars and oh my god right and just pointing at every it reminded me of uh, Toby Maguire and uh, in the second Spider Man where <laughs> yeah but Venom and he thinks he's so that hot and he's dancing around <laughs> yeah but that that was filmed for a movie this was filmed with the public so they didn't know what the fuck was going on <laughs> they didn't know what the fuck was going on real cinematography you know John Waters. <laughs> uh... God bless him. Yeah, I love that man. You know, he 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 loves Christmas, and um, I would go to a show or one of his Christmas shows is just to say hey, hey, but yeah, I I'm not I'm not gonna run to it or anything. But um, then again, I almost accepted tickets to a, a Christmas show where Zoe De Chanel was gonna sing at. But I I fully believe that if me and her were in the same room, my head would explode because uh, I get too excited. <laughs> oh man, this this is fun. Iris, I'm going to kick it back to you again, though, because I don't want to give away too much about Female Trouble, because people should watch it and, yeah. you know, enjoy themselves. Um, what, anything else? I'm going to give one a 10. Okay, I'm going to give this a 9. This is John Waters. You know, if you want a crude, feel-good movie, it, that's what you need to watch. It's exploitation. Like I said, it's in my wheelhouse. So, of course, I'm going to give it a good score. It's enjoyable. I mean, just sit down and watch it. It's very much a party movie. And like Gary said, you know, throw this on when you have friends over, y'all are drinking, having fun, throw it on and then watch people who have never seen this. Because the expressions on their face when like a dick gets pulled out, the baby cord, the umbilical cord or, you know, any other fucking, it's just hilarious to watch people react. So, yeah, I'm going to give this a nine. 
I'm right with you there. It, it's like a nine or an eight. It's not. It's not perfect in, in, in by any means, but you know, it's made on. It was made on a uh, a shoestring budget, and I'm gonna give it eight uh, gator penises out of all well, filthy gator penises out of ten. It's it's uh just there, you know. <laughs> No, no, no singing uh, buttholes in this movie. It just, it, it just doesn't happen. No. No surfing bird. But um, you do get Gator's penis, and that's gross. So there, there's that. It's, it's, uh, but um, yeah, that, that that has been this, and we'll be right back to close up the show. Hello. Hello. Who is this? Who are you trying to reach? I don't know. Um, I think you've got the wrong number. I'm gonna hang up. Wait, don't hang up. What's that noise? Popcorn? You're making popcorn. Uh huh. I only eat popcorn when I listen to podcasts. I'm about to listen to a podcast. Oh, really? Which one? Probably the podcast on Haunted Hill. Is that the one with the two guys with the beards? Uh, yeah, Dan and Gav. Dan and Gav, yeah. That podcast was scary, I liked it. Most episodes, they look at two different horror movies. Each episode, they look at a world of a strange, where they look at weird things from around the world. Sometimes, they even do special episodes where they look at different genres or directors' discographies and talk about them. Do you have a boyfriend? Maybe. So where can I find the podcast on Haunted Hill? Well, you can go to legionpodcast.com, Facebook, Twitter, or just go into iTunes and search for the podcast on Haunted Hill. So, are you going to ask me out? Well, folks, uh, thanks. Uh, we, we hope your your holidays went splendidly, and we hope this was a nice uh, capper for, for your um, your Yuletide glow, you know, New, New Year's drunkenness, whatever you do around the holidays. We hope you're uh, safe and you know possibly warm or cold and flaccid like Gator's, like Gator's penis, perhaps, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's gross, people. But, um... Ira, is anything coming up, girl, for you? Uh, well, yeah. So, um, Mike, Mark, and Vanessa McHenry uh, did Brain Dead this last Saturday, and that dropped on January 2nd. And then, not this Saturday, but the next, um, I will be heading the discussion on Hell Up in Harlem. And, uh, yeah, so if you want to listen to me more, or to Mark, or even, you know, explore exploitation films a little more we are at exploitationfilm.com cool always good to hear from those guys um and you of course iris uh yeah this this show um any show you could think of um is gonna be migrating to a to a to a uh renamed feed it should be the same feed but bo is gonna rename it to, for the um, the 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 butcher shop because that's all the that's where all my shows fall uh that i produce Burning for Springwood, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, Blood from the Cores on Patreon, this show, and um, ba -ba 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 -ba, Last Call of Torchies. Uh, okay, I'll be found either on the Cinem feed, wherever you find, or in, in the future on the Butcher Shop feed, because uh, that's when you do the search on your, your pod catcher, if you will. Um, you, you will you'll find it there, all those shows on, on one feed, and um, last... Uh, the last last call of torches that we released, and that sounds like bad English, was uh, our discussion on Southern Comfort, which Jamie joined us on. So you can go check that out if you like Jamie, and uh, if you semi like us. And uh, the Patreon bonus will be Deliverance for that. You should check that out. Jamie was supposed to be on that one, but uh, technical difficulties prevailed, and she uh, she had, she had to drop unfortunately. And but good discussions had by all. Um, that, that should all be out by the time this is out. Um, two Jig Room Commentaries coming back. Uh, Burning for Springwood, we may record next week. Uh, but Blood from the Core, me, me and the, the Derek, the, the, the boo boo, uh, we're supposed to be talking about. Damn, I forget now. But it's something weird, and I'm looking forward to our next New York feature for that show. And uh, <laughs> I've never seen it before, so. Derek, uh, Derek lays some stuff on me sometimes, and that's awesome. And, um, but you can find all that on Legion feed and, uh, the Butcher Shop slash Cinema Beef Podcast feed, uh, respectively. Um, come join the Facebook group, The Butcher Shop, where you can find all the updates on stuff and come, come discuss the show if you'd like to. You know, I, I know feedback is hard sometimes, and 
when you get it done, I don't even care if it's negative feedback. You just tell us if you like the show or not. It'd be uh, really appreciative and, you know, input is, is important. Uh, a five-star review on Apple Music is 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 there if you want to do it. It, it helps us get more relevant, you know, us and Legion. So if you want to do that, um, I mentioned Blood from the Core and um, Legion Patreon. Only place you're going to find Blood from the Core is on there. And and the the bonus torches episodes you're gonna find on there along with the pirate radio edit um, of Cinema Psyops. Anything Bogey does is released early on there. Um, you'll find some stuff on there for for as low as two dollars a month. So for less than a cup of coffee, you can go donate and uh, help out Legion uh, to advertise and stuff because all the money goes back into the network people and nothing nothing goes in our pockets or anything. So just uh, come check it out. Um, that's it for this one. Happy New Year, like I said. Next show you should hear. Um, we're doing uh, two, two, two westerns that, that are, well, one's one's a western, one's one's a, like a samurai film that are very similar in theme. And uh, those two are Goyoko from 1969, uh, 67, I forget, and The Great Silence from 1968. Those are, uh, the next two we're gonna do, I think. No, that's that's incorrect. Those that's <laughs> I'm messing I'm up like, already. Oh, we gonna do those? Yeah, we're doing those. We're doing those after the show. I'm gonna mention next. See, I, this is where tiredness kicks in. But that that's that's in the back end of the month. Next show we're gonna do is uh we have our guest Mike White of the Projection Booth, who's gonna come on the show with us and discuss No Country for Old Men and Sam Raimi's A Simple Plan and um. It, it should be a good time. He's, he's, he's uh, it's been a long time for him to come on the show again, and I'm looking forward to having him. So those are that's that's the whole month of of uh, February lockdown for you guys. You know, March is going to be a more somber one because we're going to celebrate some dead people. But um, it is what it is. You know, long live Peter Bogdanovich and and Mr. City Portier. They'll be celebrated in the in the month of of March and then April. April I'll discuss later because April's going to be big, and I'm I'm looking forward to uh, doing a ninth anniversary month for the show. So if this is long winded, I apologize. I, I'm rambling because I'm tired. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> this has been the Your Cinema Beef Podcast, where if you've got beef, we've got the grinder. See you next time. <laughs>